What's going on guys? Welcome in to Good Hoops. My name is Dustin and it feels really good to say that again. It has been way too long since I've been posting videos on here and these NBA playoffs have been way too good to not be posting videos on here. So I'm back. Wanted to stay a little more consistent here now. Got the good Lakers hat on because I'm about to be a super hater. So I got to at least keep my, my fandom on display. I have to keep it Keep it honest, but I want to talk about the first team eliminated in the playoffs and the only team with the uh, very poor distinction of not winning a single game this postseason in their series, the Brooklyn Nets, from preseason title favorites to a hell of a lot more questions than I think anyone expected, this Nets team just imploded down the stretch, and there's a couple really big questions hanging over this franchise that are not just related to Ben Simmons. Now, this team did have a lot of injuries. In particular, losing Joe Harris, who fits so well into that system and was clearly a focal point for Steve Nash when he had everyone healthy, put Steve Nash under pressure to come up with new ways to initiate the offense and new ways to take advantage of all of the attention that... Kyrie, KD, and at one point, James Harden were supposed to attract. And that's another thing, obviously. The uh, James Harden-sized, Ben Simmons-sized elephant in the room is that they traded a lot of their depth to get James Harden last season and did not get a lot of that depth back when they traded James Harden away less than a year later. Now, you can't really... You can't blame the franchise for taking a swing to get a guy like James Harden. He's been very, very different than what we're used to seeing from him this season and in the playoffs. But no one knew that when the trade happened. It was like, okay, well, he seems to be sandbagging it, so whatever. Um, so last year when they traded for him, at least I should say, everyone was like, okay, this is a super team. Lock him in. And injuries happen and, you know, that type of stuff happens, but... Everyone's expectations were that this was the year. And for Brooklyn, this kind of had to be the year. So for it to just devolve like this to where now Kyrie has a player option for next year at about $37 million, and he's going to be eligible for an extension, which could, uh, I believe, max out at about $250 million over four or five years. Um, can't imagine he's not going to want that amount of money. So... Now, all of a sudden, they have KD, who's under contract for another four years. He just signed his extension. Kyrie, who can opt out and come back on at an even bigger price with the variables and the, the unknowns that come from him. And I mean, who knows how he's going to feel day to day even. And then Ben Simmons, who is... God love him. Uh, who knows? He signed his big extension. He's on the books next year for $35 million dollars. And he has not played a game of basketball in over a calendar year. He was uh, rumored and hyped up to join the Nets and play multiple times after the deadline when they got him. And instead, it was just excuse after excuse. And now it's coming out that he has a mental block about playing because of last year's playoffs um, when he was on the 76ers against Atlanta. And the, the stress of this mental block can manifest as back pain according to what he is saying. And if he's not just saying this to recoup the like $20 million he lost being fined by the 76ers when he was just sitting out and staying away before the trade deadline, then the Brooklyn Nets are going to have a very long, sobering look in the mirror as they think about what to do next. Because if there are two players whose trade value is probably at its lowest, it's probably Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons. So... This is the team that KD is, is with. this is it. Like, I don't know what you can do. They don't have the picks to get rid of these guys. In theory, you wouldn't want to be the team that has to attach a pick to get rid of a young Ben Simmons under contract or a player of the skill level of Kyrie Irving. But the inconsistencies are just too high. Now, that would be one thing. If that was the issue, that'd be great. A team, a GM could sit down, Sean Marks, is a wonderful general manager. He's done an exceptional job as he is, has led this team to this new, this new status. But 
The issue is Kevin Durant is 34 years old. He's in Brooklyn because he wanted specifically to play with Kyrie Irving. And now the Nets are staring down the barrel of 250 plus million for Kyrie. Uh, with him, you know, who knows what you're going to get. KD's 34 years old. He's missed time with injury. Uh, everyone was saying he got clamped in the playoffs and he looked washed, but that's just typical NBA Twitter overreaction, I think. I think KD is is still one of the best, if not the best player in the league on the planet. Um, three bad games, or three inefficient games, uh, and timid games don't erase the entire body of work we saw this season. He was an MVP candidate before he got hurt. Um... But the, the Nets have to decide if they want to be that team. Is this the roster that it's going to take to to get them over the hump and to get them to the finals? Because KD's skill level is unquestioned. Kyrie Irving from night to night, you don't know what you're getting. But at his best, his skill is top 15 in the league. Ben Simmons, you have no idea. Joe Harris, we'll see how he comes back from injury. Then... Seth Curry and Javon Carter are the only two non-rookie players under contract. So this whole roster is going to look completely different next year. Seth, uh, Patrick, Patty Mills has an opt-out option for next year, a player option, I should say. And then everyone else comes off the books. Bruce Brown, LaMarcus Aldridge, Blake Griffin, James Johnson, Andre Drummond. Oh, they're still playing Jaleel Okafor. Oh, oof, it's bad. Um, but... Andre Drummond was the other piece that they got back in the Harden trade, and he instantly came in and helped boost their rebounding, their uh, interior defense. And so to lose him, to have to go back to the drawing board on these guys, is going to be tough because if they sign Kyrie and they are, they're paying Ben Simmons $35 million next year, KD $45 million next year, and Kyrie opts in for 37 or more, they're going to be pretty hamstrung on, on who they can go get. I'm really curious to see what happens. And, and the thing that, that killed them this entire playoffs with Boston was their depth. Boston just sent defenders at KD. They said, we're going to let KD struggle. We're going to let everyone else do their thing. Kyrie was like oddly pensive and passive through a lot of the games. Like it never felt like he was like interested in taking over, which is another problem. And they just didn't have the depth and the shooting needed. You can only call on Seth Curry and Patty Mills for so long. I don't know if it would have made a difference if they had Joe Harris out there. Because really, like, the outside shooting wasn't the problem. The problem was when your interior players are Andre Drummond, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Blake Griffin. You're going to have a hard time getting stops. And you're going to have a hard time manufacturing offense for them that isn't created by someone like Kyrie or Patty Mills. So what they need to find is they need to find another strong forward position player that they can put out there either alongside KD or in those minutes when KD is resting that is skilled enough to create their own shot but also competent enough to like move in the flow of the offense and know where to be on defense. And that type of player is making like $15, $25 million right now a year. That's become one of the most valuable types archetypes of player in the league. So... Unless Brooklyn has a trade in mind or they're thinking sign and trade with someone, um, it's going to be bleak. It's going to be rough. And honestly, I think that that's a, that's a bummer. This was a team that had high expectations before the year. KD's one of my favorite players of all time, really. I love watching KD play. Seeing him, like, I'll never forget seeing him in person when he was still in OKC. And, like, he dropped, like, 50-something, but it was like he didn't break a sweat. It was like watching a video game where, like, he just went up and down the court, just up and scored and back and grabbed the rebound and up and scored, and it was beautiful. And he's had that smoothness and that fluidity to his game forever, and I love it. So to see him be here now when he was in the perfect basketball situation with the Warriors, I, it's tough. It's a tough look. Uh, Kyrie, I'm a huge fan of as well. I'll be really curious to see what he does because after the game, he said all sorts of things like KD and I are in, I have to be in charge of help, helping with management, helping with roster decisions. We have to be hands-on and involved. I'm definitely going to be here. But like, he also said all of that before he left Boston. So maybe he won't be here. Like, who knows what is going to happen? And I think that's part of why this is so interesting is maybe Brooklyn, you know, they certainly didn't expect to be out 
this fast. And if they didn't know or have an idea about what they're going to do or what their plan was for the off season, and now here it is blown up in their face and thrown in at their feet, like way faster than anyone could have imagined. I think it's going to be a lot of hard decisions. I think someone like Joe Harris with the injury issues and the, and the contract, if they end up keeping Patty Mills and Seth Curry, Joe Harris could be expendable. I think Seth Curry could be expendable because that's what they're going to have to give up to get anything of substance back. You don't have the picks to do it. You're going to need to probably package one of these mid contracts, which the only one is Joe Harris at 18 mil. You're going to have to package him with some picks and hope that you can go get a serviceable interior interior player that can help anchor your defense and is good enough on offense to to hold their own. So like in theory if they had the cap space the perfect player for this team would be if DeAndre Ayton did not resign with Phoenix. If Phoenix either said, "Hey, see ya, we're not picking it up" or or who knows, if they didn't want to offer the max, whatever it was, if DeAndre Ayton was like that's the player that I would grab and put on this team right now or like Miles Bridges but Miles Bridges is kind of more of the same. He's better defensively than a lot of the wings that aren't KD. Uh, I think Bruce Brown should be a priority to bring back, but I believe teams will probably try to drive his price up as well. So I'm just I'm really interested as someone invested in in KD's success and his career. I'm very interested to see where this goes. I think um, I have faith in Sean Marks. I should say I think he's shown what a good GM he can be over the years and the deals he's made and the moves he's pulled off. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a swing to try to clear space for someone like an Aiton or a Miles Bridges. But, I mean, you never know. It's way too early in the season. Uh, but needed to come on and react a little bit to this because the Nets being the first team out is shocking. And the way they got knocked out is unbelievable. I, I still cannot believe what we saw. So... That's it for this. Uh, if you have Nets thoughts, if you're a Nets fan, please hit the comments. Let me know. Let me know what you think about the team. What you think? Uh, maybe what the off season might look like. Please let me know. Uh, I promise I will be more consistent throughout the playoffs. Now, uh, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss anything, and I will be back.